All right, YouTube. I got the air motor pump on the um, Cine unit. And I'm um, just do your little rundown what you would have to do. Uh, it comes with this little uh, rubber like insulator for the pump housing. So you want to just go ahead and put that on the pump. And then um, this piece right here, it's like a high pressure uh, line. It come with this line right here, but it ain't long enough. And I think this line right here is mainly for it. It holds a, a lot of pressure. So what you need to do once you get it off of the old one, it's gonna let it fo let it focus. Once you get it off the the old one, you're gonna have to probably get like a lighter and heat it up a little bit, and then uh, work your way work the the air motor pump onto the line because it's when it's not heated up, it's just rock hard, and I think that's that's how these lines are made. Um, but this part right here hooks to there. And you just um you know press these little tabs right here, push them in. And then you um unhook it and you can be able to work with it a little bit better. But uh yeah, just do that and then your connections right here. You just connect those together and work this is the plug in for your old pump. You just cut this off and you just color coordinate the, the wires back together. So you just cut cut this piece off and butt it back together. And I think that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and get it fixed up and then I'll let you see the end result. Alright, got the uh, pump all put back together. As you see, I got the whole assembly connected back together now. So what I'm gonna do. I'm going to have to get like a, a rivet gun to push this piece back in. I don't want to put bolts in it because I think that the reason they do that because of the vibration from the pump itself, it could loosen up the bolts. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and try to get me like a rivet gun to get those back in there. And uh, these, uh, I think they like rubber bushing something like to oscillate the you know the vibration of the the pump itself the housing so once that get down in place i'm gonna make sure all of that right there get pushed down good and i went ahead and did the wires and i did them like this and i use a soldering gun so um that's the best way to do it because you want to make sure all the wire is um Take, I mean, taped up pretty good. So, in case any kind of like fuel or anything splash up there, you won't have no kind of you know fuel getting in your line, your own wire, or anything like that. So, I got that pretty good. And um, like I say, you, you want to use soldering. You want to solder it because I, if you try to twist it up, the shrink wrap tape won't fit around it that good. So, I think that's pretty. Good good like that so once i get that done i get it in the tank and i'll catch you next time peace all right you two i got the um car all put back together with the fuel pump and um uh, this is how everything look with the brackets and everything so got everything put back together and I think that the pump should sound pretty good. I don't know if you can see, but this is how I got. I know it looked kind of crazy, but I got it cut up. I'm going to put a little trap door back there. And uh, there you go. So I'm going to go and crank it up. And um, let y'all hear how the fuel pump sound. I hope it sounds pretty good. But uh, it should crack right on up. I got all the wiring done. And let's see. And it's a whole lot quieter, too. And then, too, see, that other pump is not on there. So I ain't got to hear that beep. 
uh, pump winding because as soon as the key come on, it it stays running. You know, it don't it don't shuts off. So that that's a good thing. But you have to prime the car for a while. I done did it. So let's go ahead and try to crank it. Eventually get this in right here cut a little bit more over so I can be able to get to that little pump that little not this one but it's one farther about right there. I don't know if you can see it and try to zoom in on it. It's like right there behind it. So we'll try to get that cut a little bit more wider and then um that should be pretty good. But I gotta take the pump back out because the float I think fell down into the tank. So I gotta get that done. And uh pretty much it. And gotta do um I'm gonna try to work on my rear end next. Try to get um uh, a stronger rear end done. So once I go to the track I won't have to worry about breaking no axles or nothing like that. And that'll be it. So Y'all like, share. Um, I hope y'all like the video, man. Um, doing the pump is is it's a little tedious, but just take your time at it. It's not hard. Uh, and you know the wiring. Um, it's this is the diagram for it. It's pretty much self-explanatory. It's 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 really simple. It's, I mean, really simple. So. This is the, the beginning. So if you want to pause your screen and just read through it. And here's the back. And um it's it's pretty simple, man. It ain't it ain't rocket science, it's really simple. You just button into you taking some wires loose, plugging them in, and that's it. And running your extra wire to your alternator. And this is the fuse that that runs to the pump so if it were to um anything would have happened it, the fuse would blow instead of burning the pump up anything like that and i made it a little access you know to get to it so that's pretty good like that and i think that's gonna be it for this video so y'all like share the share the video subscribe man i'm trying to it, the channel doing pretty good for me you know at 233 subscribers right now so it's moving along so y'all like share subscribe and we out peace